For the seventh time in a year, the fiery power of this volcano in Iceland on full display. The eruption, which began Wednesday, spewing lava that has consumed and collapsed roads, creeping closer to civilization. Molten rock gushing through Grindavik, about an hour's drive from the capital city of Reykjavik. Authorities set up barriers to divert the streams of lava away from the town. Smoke billowing relentlessly in these alarming images seen on land and from the air. As the hours drag on, the lava consuming two miles, forcing about 50 evacuations. It always begins quietly, too quietly. At first, Iceland just felt like Iceland. Icy wind cutting through moss-covered lava fields, steam rising from black volcanic rock, tourists floating in milky blue geothermal waters beneath soft gray skies. A postcard frozen in time. The Reykjanes Peninsula, just southwest of Reykjavik, sat calmly while planes landed at the international airport and visitors packed buses to the Blue Lagoon. Houses stood on what was believed to be stable ground. Roads cut across landscapes that had been silent for eight long centuries, but beneath that apparent calm was a secret. Pressure, heat, and molten rock building beneath the crust. Most people never imagined that the ground underneath their feet had been quietly preparing for a geological awakening, a shift so massive it could reshape the future of Iceland for centuries. Because Iceland isn't just another island, it's literally being ripped apart by two continents that refuse to stay still. That tearing force comes from the Mid-Atlantic Ridge, an invisible scar running down the center of the Atlantic Ocean. On this line, the Eurasian tectonic plate pulls to the east and the North American plate pulls to the west. Two giants drifting away from each other like ex-lovers who can't even share the same room anymore. Their breakup is slow, steady, and violent, but in the deep timeline of Earth, it's been happening forever. Iceland is the only place where this ridge rises above sea level, putting the raw machinery of the planet on display. For most of recorded history, the peninsula was quiet. It seemed safe. Lava had stopped flowing there before the United United States even existed, before Shakespeare wrote his first play, before Europeans even knew the Americas were real, Icelanders came to believe the silence meant peace. Towns grew, tourism exploded, Iceland's most famous attraction, the Blue Lagoon, was built directly in a volcanic zone because no one thought the land would wake up again. It seemed like ancient fire had gone cold, but the earth remembers. In March 2021, the Reykjanes region stirred, a volcanic fissure ripped open and glowing magma spilled into the night. People rushed to watch lava fountains tear into the sky like fireworks forged by the planet itself. For some residents, the eruption left them in the dark, without electricity and in some cases, without heat. The electricity supply has been destroyed because of the heat from the lava has simply melted or affected the lines. For many who evacuated months ago, along with the latest wave this week, questions remain about the status of their homes. When? Do we go back? Can we go back? Will we ever go back? At first, it felt like a spectacle, a once-in-a-lifetime show, something to post on Instagram and then move on. But then, a second eruption came, then a third, then a fourth. By 2024, eight eruptions had struck the peninsula, forming new craters and sending molten rivers across the land. For the seventh time in a year, the fiery power of this volcano in Iceland on full display. Scientists who had long whispered that the quiet wouldn't last forever suddenly realized Iceland had entered a new geological chapter, one not seen in 800 years. This wasn't a temporary flare-up, this was a new era. Many asked the simplest question. Why now? Why here? What changed beneath the surface to restart Iceland's volcanic engines after so many centuries? A team of scientists led by geochemist James Day began to investigate. They collected molten rock, still glowing hot when retrieved, from each new eruption to analyze its chemical signature. In volcanology, these samples are like clues in a crime scene, helping researchers piece together the story of what's happening beneath the surface. The team's investigation revealed something unexpected. The drama playing out wasn't just simple magma rising from the mantle. There was a secret intermediate stage, hidden pools of magma collecting in the crust. In 2021, the first eruption pulled magma up from the mantle, but instead of going straight to the surface, it began to settle beneath the crust, melting the surrounding rock. That rock added chemical signals, rhenium, and other elements, 
into the magma, transforming it. This mixture built up pressure inside underground chambers. Eventually, that pressure had nowhere left to go but upward, and the ground split. When that eruption blasted open a path, the magma didn't seal the route behind it. The Earth's plumbing remained open, so new magma, rising later, found the same pathways and erupted more easily. The crust became a volcanic highway system. That's why subsequent eruptions happened faster, sometimes only months apart. Instead of having to melt fresh rock every time, magma was simply flowing through those earlier carved tunnels. Think of it like someone breaking a locked door. Once it's shattered, anyone can walk through. So now Iceland is dealing with a landscape permanently changed, not just above ground, but below it. Scientists compare the Reykjanes Peninsula to waking up a sleeping monster. That monster has stretched, cracked its knuckles, and decided it's not going back to sleep. The scariest part? Researchers believe this could continue for 100 to 200 years, an entire new geological era. But here's where the story gets even more dramatic. A lot of people think Iceland is literally splitting in half, about to physically tear into two separate landmasses. And while it's partly true that the plates are separating and that the island is ripping at its seams, it isn't actually breaking apart. That's because the same force that tears Iceland apart also rebuilds it. As plates pull away, magma rushes up to fill the gap, hardens, and becomes new crust. The island is constantly being refreshed, healed, made whole again. It's like Earth's version of regeneration, a wound that constantly recloses even as it continues to be cut open. Iceland doesn't split, it grows. Every eruption adds more land. Every year, Iceland becomes just a little bit bigger. One of the best places to see this process is at Thingvellir National Park, where giant fissures cut through the landscape. There you can stand in a rift valley, literally on the border between continents. The crack is widening. You can even snorkel between plates at Silfra, swimming in crystal clear glacial water above the line where the earth is pulling apart. Farther southwest, a symbolic bridge, the bridge between continents, lets visitors walk from the North American plate to the Eurasian plate in just a few steps. But that tourist novelty comes with a cost. The fissures that fascinate travelers are the same ones threatening homes, roads, and critical infrastructure. The 2023-2024 eruption cycle devastated Grindavik, a fishing town where residents had to evacuate as molten rivers flowed toward their houses. Streets cracked, buildings sank, People watched as lava consumed the land their families had lived on for generations. For many, the question isn't just science, it's survival. And the danger is far from over. Scientists believe the magma pathways beneath Reykjanes are now established. Pressure continues to build. Eruptions could come with little warning. Each one adds new layers of land, but also new threats. Iceland's main international airport sits barely 15 miles away. The Blue Lagoon has been evacuated multiple times. Even the power plants that heat Icelandic homes are at risk. This region isn't just geological, it's deeply personal. Families have lived on that land for centuries. Many don't want to leave. Some have already lost everything. Others return, patch up their roofs, and pray the next eruption stops inches before their front doors. Meanwhile, scientists are racing to study the system in real time. This is the first time in history that modern instruments have been able to measure Iceland as it enters a centuries-long eruption cycle. They use GPS to track how the ground swells seismographs to record every tremor, mass spectrometers to decode the chemistry of lava like doctors reading blood work. It's as if the Earth is giving us a live demonstration of how continents are formed, how oceans widen, how planets evolve, and humans are watching from their rooftops. The presence of the Icelandic mantle plume, a deep column of superheated rock rising from the Earth's interior, only intensifies the activity. That plume is the fuel source beneath Iceland, providing endless magma. It's the engine turning Iceland into a living forge. Picture a blowtorch pointing at the underside of a moving crack. As the plates shift, the plume feeds molten rock into the rift. New crust forms over and over again. It's creation through destruction, a cycle as old as Earth itself. That's why Iceland hasn't torn apart into two alien islands floating away from each other. Every time the plates try to separate, the plume patch fills the gap. The land is always renewing. A geological paradox. The island is splitting, but not breaking. 
Instead, it's expanding. But Iceland's future isn't guaranteed to be peaceful. If the eruption cycle continues, as most scientists believe, the next century could redefine the map. Lava flows may reroute roads, bury neighborhoods, and transform coastlines. New mountains could rise, old sites might vanish. Yet with all that danger comes opportunity. For scientists, this is a once-in-a-lifetime chance to observe crust formation happening in real time. For Iceland, it's a reminder of identity, an island born of fire, shaped by ash, forged at the boundary of worlds. There's a kind of poetry to it. The idea that Iceland is always falling apart and being reborn, like a phoenix rising from its own lava. But for the people who live there, it's not poetry, it's real. At night, they see orange skies reflect on their windows. They hear rumbling beneath their floors. They feel the earth breathing, alive, restless. There's something humbling about that. In a world where humans believe they can control anything, Iceland laughs. It reminds us that we sit on a living planet, one that shifts without permission, one that can swallow a house without hesitation. And yet, despite the danger, Icelanders stay. They rebuild again and again, maybe because they know the truth, that Iceland was never meant to be still, that its beauty comes from its volatility, that its soul is fire. So no, Iceland isn't splitting in two like some dramatic movie plot. It's not about to fall into the ocean, swallowed by its own eruptions. The truth is stranger. It's rebuilding itself, one eruption at a time, growing, transforming, alive. And for the next hundred years, we get to watch. Maybe we're witnessing the early chapters of Iceland's next evolution. An island becoming something new, forged in fire, baptized in ice, locked between continents that pull at it like forces of destiny. For now, the magma keeps rising. The the ground keeps trembling, the plates keep drifting, Iceland remains caught in the middle, a scar stitched together by fire, a reminder that our world is not finished, it's still being written beneath our feet.